I went down the, down the rabbit hole and was reading about your days um, of organizing raves in the uh, in the late eighties and nineties. <laughs> Pretty incredible career you had. Drugs, yeah, raves, AK forty sevens, blackjack, hedge fund, bankrupt, and then attacked by a bull, then Guido. It's pretty incredible. I could have been an accountant and had a more boring life, I suppose, but you know, didn't pass that exam. Um, yeah, eighteen months that was of my life. But in in my bio, and certainly when uh, people look into it, it takes up a lot more time. And I, I do enjoy doing all those. Well, it's been, it must be what, nearly 30 years now since the summer of love and people, I've done the 10 year anniversary, 20 year anniversary, 30 year anniversary, and people just cannot believe that once I was a skinny, psychedelic clad um, raver. So what can you do? Uh, Guido, when, when you started it, um, I was wondering how you, uh, how many years it took for the website to start making enough money for you to um to survive. Were you, were you doing other work alongside it when you first started? No, I just um, had two or three years of litigation and uh, I, I was out of, I used to work in financial markets as fund manager, trader, broker, did a few different things and I was suing my backer and this went on for years and uh, I said to my wife, I, I think um, I want to give this blogging thing a go. She's like, broking? Broking? Oh, that's great. You can go back to your broker, make money come down the phone. You know, you'll just find your old customers, your old clients. So no, no, blogging. And he said, that is never going to pay as well as bond broking. Um, it might, it might. It pays quite well, but it's got a lot more fun. Mm. Uh, and how, so how many years did it take? Uh, so that, that was your... That was you know, your... In September 2004, and uh, I didn't know anything about how anything works. And I only had affiliate ads. So typically in those days, you could set up an Amazon affiliate ad quite easily, or you could set up a Google AdSense, AdWords, um, or its predecessor, whatever it was called, quite easily. And I did that and I made just about enough to cover my phone bill for a couple of years. Uh, and it didn't really work. And then um, a guy called Alex Hilton, came to see me and ja uh, his psychic Jag Singh. And they said, we should set up a co-op to sell advertising. We should get all the big political websites and there were, you know, all flavors, labor, conservative, intellectual, tabloid. We should get them all around the table and we should set up a cooperative and sell advertising. So we had a few meetings, all of them were sat around the table. And I asked the question, who's going to do the VAT return? Nobody wanted to do it, and so I said, I'll do it. So I ended up in a uh, sort of um, business with uh, Alex Hilton, who set up Labour Home, I think, and Jag Singh. And uh, we bought out Alex, because God bless his soul, he is a good friend of mine. He just wasn't commercially minded, and he would go to lunch with the TUC, spend two or three hundred quid on lunch, and get a 500 pound order from them for advertising, which didn't really make any commercial sense um uh, so we bought him out in about 2008 i think and me and jag ran the, or jag primarily i was kind of more financial and strategic and that has run quite well uh so i'm not really uh day-to-day -day selling advertising but i do have an interest in it still. yeah oh so so how much of your you're not doing it day to day, but how much of your time is kind of spent um, in, a, in a week? How much time would you spend dedicating towards message space or would it be not much at all? Um, if I admit how little or how much, one side or the other gets annoyed. So either Guido guys will go, ah, or the, or the message space guys will go, um, I try to concentrate on the strategic stuff. I mean, uh, message space, we had a bit of a torrid time um, or we feared we we're going to have a torrid time rather, and it turned out it was okay. So sort of last April, May, business went down the tube, as for everyone, well, everyone pulled back, and we thought, oh, hell, what's going to happen here? I was worried that we were going to have to furlough people, which I didn't really want to do. Turned out How many employees? Out. How many employees does it have? Um, this space that currently is understaffed, only has two employees full-time. Um, Part-time bookkeeper and um, 
uh, part-time consultant in me, I suppose. Uh, the, we didn't furlough anyone. And we basically about June, the political advertisers figured out what they were going to do and they came back. And July and August, we actually did better than normal. So over the whole year, I think Mr. Space um, did about the same as the year before, which I take as a massive win. No redundancies, no furloughing. Um, people realised by the end of the year, actually, the lobbyists in particular, and lobbying firms and campaigns and charities are big clients because they're the people who want to influence politics and want to reach ministers and government um, uh, people in Whitehall. So the lobbyists who already are a substantial part of Mr. Space's business realised that they couldn't go out to lunch with anyone, but they could still reach people by advertising on the sites that they do business on. And we at Mr. Space act as conventional media buyers for the Spectator or Politico or New Statesman. So you can call Measure Space and advertise on all platforms in one call, which yeah. if you're not if you're not an experienced media buyer, and a lot of political advertisers aren't because it's not their, something they do every day, it's an occasional thing, then it's a lot less hassle to call Measure Space. They'll sort out everything. You don't have to know about all the technology or the technical side of it. And they'll do business on all, um, all different platforms and different publishers. Yeah. So how many, um, how many publishers and websites does it work with now? It works with anybody and everybody. I mean, we literally do buy space of the Guardian and the Sun, you know, when it's called for. So it's no longer a sort of blog um, exclusive media buying operation. It's a general conventional digital media buying. And it isn't only digital. We're actually quite happy to organise prints. I mean, it's not our expertise, but if you give us the, uh, <coughs> the artwork, we will negotiate that for you. So it's more of a full service but with a with a bias towards political online yeah um and um is is uh how, how does it work in in terms of its relationship with guido um what's the what's the relationship um it's well it's just guido is another client basically uh, yeah so it's uh the i've had um arguments with uh, Jack in the past over what share of uh, the revenue split should be for ads sold on Guido. Uh, it's, it's, it's a big client of their spaces, but it's not the only one. 